G'day team, welcome to this week's Life on the Holes. I'm here with my brand new Helm Station hardtop. Holy dooly, this has taken some work. This has been going on for a few weeks. I've got wiring conduits, I've got hatch access into the wiring conduits. We've put a window in to be able to monitor the sails and uh, that'll be going on in about a week's time. I've been working up on the boat. So this week, very, very big project is about to begin. I'm actually going to finish off spraying the hatches on the stern of the boat and then we're moving into part one of our hydraulic steering install. So part one will carry us right through till I get half of the conduit in. I'll get half of the pipe work in and then uh, part two, I'm going to complete install of the pipe and then uh, we'll move on to completion at a later date. So let's get into it guys. Our stern rudder compartment hatches need a little bit of adjustment. I've actually made this area too thick. So I closed the hatch, got in the hatch and actually marked out all the areas that are going to need to be relieved. And then I'm probably gonna to have to glass it again. This is solid core, so I may get away with it. Uh, given it's the inside of a hatch, it was the outside, I'd definitely glass it. But what I'll do is I'll just sand this back to the line and that should allow it to fit back in to the drain there and actually fit correctly so I can start to fit these hatches correctly. I've still got to spray them up. I've got a little bit of spraying to do. I've got to two back hatches up on the uh, rear lounge suite and these two hatches have still got to be sprayed and finished off so you can see here this hatch is now yellow and uh, still sort of fed and foamed but i still need to spray that and polish that up so that'll be nice to get that done and complete the look now i've actually had to add a section onto the back of this to get this true to match the actual surrounds and it's going to take a little bit of sanding a little bit of detail work to get that level same deal on this one here before i can spray these up i've had to do this on a fair amount of them because i've actually cut them out and then re-glass them but i'll get them to sand it up and fair and then tomorrow i'm hoping to spray these and get them finished Wow, have I got a morning ahead. I've got the large hatches, access hatches for our rudder compartments on our hull extensions, and also our hatches for the rear lounger and for the uh, extra storage here. Now I've actually fared them all, completed them all, and got them ready for spray. Now what I'm going to do is actually spray them twice. Very important. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give them one coat of gel coat and then I'm gonna come back and spray flow coat on top of it. The reason why I'm gonna do that is because I need a little bit more body on them and then I wanna be able to polish them down. So if we don't wanna just put one layer of, uh, one spray of flow coat on it and then hopefully polish through and what might happen is we might actually end up bearing some of the green um, resin base underneath. But what I wanna do is basically put enough material on them so that firstly they're robust and, uh, and tolerant of abuse and secondly, they can be polished down to uh, to a beautiful finish. Now, the one thing you'll notice here is this is the anti-slip pattern that I actually glued on these hatches. Now, what I have to do is I don't want to obviously spray that again. So I've got these um, core flute covers that I made some time ago. I'm going to install them back on with masking tape. Mask them perfectly, but very importantly, I've actually sanded back about five millimeters on the edge of the anti-slip because what I want is for the flow coat and the gel coat to actually form up over the top of that and adhere to the edge of that anti-slip and thereby sealing it. It's already epoxied down and it's already had layers of uh, fairing compound and the like but by actually spraying up over the top that way I'll get a nice little ridge of gel coat that I can actually polish down and thereby seal them and make them look like they never happened and look like it was actually molded into the uh, into the actual hatches themselves. So important to just get the preparation right. There's hours of preparation just in doing all this. And the nice thing is that once you spray it, you're pretty much done. And then all you gotta do is give them a polish and finish them off. So yeah, it's been a bit of a bit of a big job sanding them back, getting them all fair. I think we're ready to go. We're just gonna basically mask these up and uh, and I'll be ready to spray up.
yesterday morning I sprayed these guys up with a coat of gel coat and yeah that they weren't that great to be honest I don't think they were as fair as they needed to be so I just spent another two bloody hours sanding these down and they are perfect now ready for its final flow coat I do like to get it right here because what I don't want to be doing is actually fairing again up on the boat where it's pretty neat now it's pretty clean and tidy a hell of a lot of dust up there at the moment i'm trying to avoid as much dust and overspray as i can so the more work i can do in here in a sort of a semi-controlled environment the better this one here as you can see i've got a little bit of wear through um but that was always inevitable now i actually sprayed this with gel coat but i put a tiny little bit of wax in it only a tiny bit but just enough to stop me clogging up my papers now, i had a little bit of clogging but not too much and now they're ready for their final sprays now the flow coat I'm going to use is going to have 5% wax in styrene and the styrene acts as a thinner but it also the wax allows it to rise to the surface and sets the gel coat off and sets the flow coat uh, permanently so that basically it goes off properly and cures. Now what I'm going to do though is I'm not going to come back and polish these for two days. I like to leave them for at least two days to really harden up, get that final cure going and then I'll come back and sand it. One little trick I'm going to do though is I'm going to add a tiny little bit of extra styrene just to thin it out because I don't need a lot of material, I just need a beautiful thin surface. I will still get a slight orange peel on the surface no matter how good I am with my spray gun you're always going to get a tiny little bit of orange peel with flow coat but the great thing about that is it can easily be polished out like 600, 800, 1000, 1200, bang, done and the polishing of these is not going to take too long but yeah that's a really good result i'm very happy this is the last lot of big spraying that i have to do on the boat apart from the bow and a couple of little touch-ups uh, other than that i'm pretty much done with the spraying thank god for that oh it's been a bit of a big morning <laughs> anyway they're done. So these guys are all sprayed up and they're looking really, really fine. That is beautiful. I actually put six cups of flow coat onto this. So that's about uh, 1.5 liters of flow coat on all of those hatches. Not on each of them, but on all of them in general. And now I've got plenty of material on there, including the gel coat before, to give this a really nice polish. So these can polish up like magic, these things, and uh, there's virtually no texture on them. Well, how much better does that look? They're perfect now. One day it's fiberglassing, the next day it's woodwork, the next day it's painting, spraying, and then today I'm gonna have a bit of rest. And I've decided to move on to hydraulic steering. Um, I fear there's not going to be much of a rest in it. I've already spent six or seven nights just sitting at my PC at night working out the fittings required to pull this off. And, uh, and it's not that complicated. What is complicated is all the threads. The flow of fluid is a circular motion, so that's really quite simple. Getting the fittings to cooperate, and we've got NPT fittings, the BSP fittings, SAE fittings, all these pipe threads have to then interlace into half inch copper tubing. Now Hydrive, uh, Australian company that I've purchased my steering from, don't allow the use of flexible lines and there's a good reason for that. I guess hydraulic steering can be uh, a little bit complicated in that should there be an expansion of those flexible lines then there could be steering issues down the track. Our high drive of actually a proven system with yachts and large commercial vessels. Now I have a Helm Series Admiral HD05 with pump. It requires at least a 90 centimeter wheel to, uh, to get the exact amount of turns required for 35 degrees of steering with my rudders. Now it's on both rudder stocks, it has a piston and that piston has to push that um, tiller through 35 degrees either side of centre. Um, it requires a special type of oil. There is no Teflon tape to be used on any of the fittings. It all must be Loctited and thread sealed so that we don't end up with any particles floating around inside the copper lines. They strongly recommend we don't solder or solder the uh, copper lines either 
it's all flared fitting, so I've got to then flare the copper. And I also have to get it to run through the bowels of this boat, and that is going to be my biggest challenge. Over the course of those nights working away at home, rather than find someone, a specialist to do it, I like to do things myself. I've actually come up with a, a mud map of the actual fittings required and also further uh, a bit of a section by section by section by section of how I'm intending to do this without getting too complicated and, uh, and because I've got a number of conduits and areas that are going to be a little bit complicated plus a Garmin 2 litre a minute autopilot pump I need to consider all these things and how they're going to be fitted within the realm of this boat. Look, it, it sounds pretty easy, it's just a closed system. The biggest issue is actually getting to go down from the helm, through a conduit, through into the engine room, to the autopilot pump. The autopilot pump then goes to the port side rudder. The port side return then comes out of the port side return, across the back lounge suite, down into the starboard side rudder piston back out of the starboard side rudder system, back across the lamb sweep, back into the autopilot, and then back to the helm, thereby creating a closed loop. Within that, there's many things to consider, and should my autopilot pump fail, I need to also be able to remove that, so I need to put in ball valves in every respect, uh, so that I can shut those valves and remove that autopilot pump. And then the other thing to consider too, is it needs to have a lock valve, which means that when the water has its way with the rudder, it doesn't turn my helm. I also need to install a balance line back to the reservoir, which basically allows the whole system to balance out and even out. And then I'll have to go and bleed it. So I thought I'd have a rest. There's no rest. This is going to be an epic project. It's probably going to be a two weeks of solid work just getting this all plumbed into the boat. Um, I've put it off till now that I've finished, pretty much finished all the woodwork and things aren't glued in, but I'm going to need a break in amongst this whole job. Uh, and I've got plenty of other work to do at the moment. And Janet's downstairs polishing steps and things like that. And, and I'm in a relatively clean environment now, so I can start to think about installing the steering and really get that in place. Alright, autopilot. Very interesting. The autopilot has a port and a starboard entry, as well as a balance line entry. Now it's very important that I'm able to remove this autopilot. So within this system here, where the pipes are coming in from the helm, I need to then consider having a ball valve. And those ball valves are so critical because of that, that way I can actually shut the whole thing off, remove the pump, put a new pump in or have the pump serviced and still have steering autonomous of the autopilot should anything fail. Now I have a Garmin system. Now what this requires is an O-Ring 5 BOSS, which is ORB5 to suit a 3H tube. Not a 3H pipe, a 3H tube. So this fitting here, I need one of these and I need two of these 90 degree ones to fit into the helm pump that is going to match up with this. I'm gonna need a fitting that's going to fit this fitting to this fitting and that will complete the install. My intention is to make this look like I've only spent about two minutes working this out. Um, I've got the starboard line coming in here from the helm into the autopilot. We need a T-piece, then we need a stop valve and then we need it to go into the autopilot on the starboard side. On the port side, I need to come in from the port side to a T-piece, to a stop valve, to a fitting and into the port side of the autopilot and then there's a balance line that needs to run straight back independent of this so this is a separate line all the way back to the reservoir on the helm part. So the autopilot system that we've purchased is a Reactor 40 Garmin autopilot. It's actually a smart pump, it's a two litre per minute pump so it's more than capable of handling the volume of the fluid that's going to be pushed around this boat and there's quite a bit of fluid it'll be liters and liters of the stuff because i've got around about 60 or so feet 20 odd meters of copper tubing to be put into the boat so what looks good on paper isn't always the case so i've got the autopilot pump here and i'm just going to sit that there for a moment and try to explain this because 
once I start doing it in the engine room, it's gonna make no sense or whatsoever. You've got fittings on the top here. This is for the port, the starboard, and this one down here is for the balance line. Now, the issue is these are 90 degree fittings. I've actually purchased these separately. They're C-Star fittings. They're ORB5, which is O-ring boss, which means that it doesn't need sealant. So the majority of this system, every single thread fitting we need to actually seal with Loctite. I think it's 545 or 454, I can't remember. Um, but essentially, these threads will all need to be sealed into the ball valves, into everything else. But when it comes to the autopilot pump, we have an O-ring ORB5 fitting, which is, I imagine, the thread size. But it's actually an O-ring fitting. It's a peculiar fitting. It's not available very readily. And I had to order these two 90-degree fittings from... C star and they fit into this here and then this adjusts down so we can actually adjust the height of it there's no sealant required now i've actually moved the fitting from here to here you can actually have it in either here or here and here and here so that's port starboard i've moved it to the top after about an hour and a half of dicking around in the engine room trying to get the rest configurations for all of this hoo-ha that I've got here. And I've come up with this sort of setup. Now I'll actually show you in a moment how much space I've got in the engine room. The issue is not length. I've got 10 foot long engine rooms. What I don't have is I don't have a lot of height between the bed base, the insulation, and where all this stuff has to happen. And the copper will come down from the helm along here and go underneath, carry on down towards the back of the boat. That's about the best I could come up with. It is actually pretty neat, and the nice thing is that this is going to be pinned to the bulkhead. So these will actually be pinned to a bulkhead, so to minimise vibration. And I'm only dealing with short amounts of copper. We're talking about probably, you know, three inches of copper. I do need to fit the fittings onto the copper before you flare them, because the flare is here. And once I put the cop, once I put this fitting on, I then need to flare the fitting and then screw that in place. Arm and smart pump. It's basically got feedback, CCU, and power. Obviously, it's NMEA, and it basically all links into our network here, and it'll actually be controlled by a flux gate uh, compass that'll mount underneath the helm station. But yeah, the fittings has been quite some, quite some working out. I've got my drawings. I'm almost there to, with regard to how I'm gonna set it up. I think I'm almost ready to start bending some tube. I've built a boat, I've completed the electrics with the help of Zach. We've constructed some pretty serious composite stuff in my time. However, what is doing my head in is this, the hydraulic steering. I'll need to start that today. Uh, I've ordered a shitload of fittings. I've got, I've had advice from High Drive. I've spoken to Garmin. There's a number of things I need to do to make this thing whole work. So what I'm gonna do is basically get into just pulling a couple of copper tubes got uh, over 25 meters of copper half inch copper tube a neil copper tube i first need to straighten a lot i then need to re-bend it so a neil copper is good for that right uh, so i've got a bit of a straightening jig here to get it started all you do is get a piece of wood here drill a 13 millimeter hole for half inch um copper tube basically put it in a vise and then you're able to sort of extrude it through the hole and although it doesn't appear straight it's actually a good way of straightening it out i find that uh that's actually good i watched a plumber do this once through the studs of a house i thought oh that's a good idea that's a nice way to straighten it out first tubes i need i need three 1.9 meter long lengths so i've got my tube cutter here and the trick with this is just to go gradually and uh and just increase the depth every couple of turns done quite a bit of this in the past And eventually it'll just cut through it very very easy to cut and uh, you know experts will tell you differently but it's that simple now the problem is we've got quite a burr there so we've got a deburring tool on the end of the tube cutter here and essentially you just deburr the tube clean it up We'll obviously be deburring every single fitting that we cut. But for now, that's not quite straight. 
but there is another way to straighten it and that is uh, just to basically roll it on some cement or a flat surface. I prefer to do it on something softer than it's scratching it and, uh, and then we can go from there. I've made up my first three tubes and I've only put the fitting on one end. You gotta to remember to put the fitting on the whole thing before you flare it. So uh, I've gotten caught out. And actually, in fact, I flared this both ends of this tube with two fittings on it, but then I couldn't slide them around. So ran into a couple of problems there. So I'm just gonna flare a 90 degree and go in and see how it's all gonna pan out inside the boat. Okay, so starting up here at the helm, we're going to come down and then I've got to do a straight 90 degree bend into a cupboard and then another 90 degree bend down. So I'll put one fitting on this end, but I'm going to have to do another one there somewhere. And then on this line, I've also got to allow for a shadow dryer. So there's lots going on in here. Okay. What did I say? <laughs> you said a straight 90 degree bend. Sorry. <laughs> well, a 90 degree bend. <laughs> The foreman's got me. She's on top of me with my terminology. I've had so many cock-ups with this. This is about my fifth iteration of this. And I've just learned a very valuable lesson with this copper flaring. That if you want to do a 90 degree bend like this, you need to have the fitting on, but you need to allow enough room for that fitting to come back so that you can actually flare it. So I've had about four or five goes at it. As you can see, there's a heap of little bits of copper here where I've been cutting off and uh, and sort of further reiteration should be right now now that i know what i'm doing this stuff should be gold plated it's freaking expensive stuff not the copper the brass fittings anyway we've got a bit of a method here and luckily i've just just enough room through the throttle cable um housing to get it in to the actual boat all right so i've got port balance starboard and they have to be fitted up through the helm. Down here like this. Luckily through where the throttle goes, out of control. I've got just enough room to get them there. Hello. <laughs> Alright, so this is the port side one going in. Can you go to that? Just hold it. Yeah, got it. Yeah, just don't let that nut fall, will you? What nut? That nut. You got it? Yeah. It's just so short. I know. Oh, get on there, you. Would you like me to turn the camera off? And our starboard one. Now I've got to pull all these out again, but I'm just getting length. I think I'm gonna to have to cut out a bit of the shelf. I don't know. Of course, oh, because this line is coming so far down. This is turning into a very complicated affair. I've got uh, routing down in here and I'm trying to get everything. I'm trying to bend them with a pipe bender and it's actually putting a little crimp in it, whereas the spring bender actually did it without crimping at all. So not really sure what's going on there. Interesting, I've actually got a very expensive tube bender up in the factory and uh, I've also got a simple plumber's copper tube bender. This thing actually creates less crimping or no crimping. The pipe bender tends to mark the pipe, whereas this spring, virtually no mark whatsoever on it and no crimping. So I'm going to stick with this, I think, and it'll be much easier. The nice thing about the spring is you can actually see through it to see where your mark is.
Well, look at that spring bend, absolutely perfect. Tube bend, bit notchy, so I'm sticking with the spring. I think the spring's the answer. Yeah, this is the tightest corner of the boat, and I'm trying to do the hardest thing. So, this is the, the line. I've almost finished the balance line here. I've actually got to run a lead from, or a line from the balance line here down to this pipe here, which actually disappears up to the helm. But I need to put a stop valve in here. Sorry about the light flickering, but I've got to put a stop valve here, and I'm gonna build a manifold uh, bracket that actually holds this because I've got insulation going in here on the back wall of the engine room But so that'll sit here out in the open here, but it'll actually be mounted against a bracket later on uh, Just need to get this a little bit Sort of more configured and I'm gonna have three lines coming up here uh, One two and three and then probably a hydraulic hose I think from the autopilot down to this stop valve to this JIC fitting here. So remembering I'm only roughing all this in so they all can be removed. I can't actually remove these two. I won't be able to remove because we're going through a bulkhead. Um, so they obviously got a flared fitting. So the only way to remove it really is to cut it and, uh, and replace it. But that's okay. We should never have to remove this. So this will be here. There'll be another one here and another one here. And that is for our starboard port balance line. And then three hydraulic hoses simply matching up to the actual to the helm uh, pump or the actual autopilot pump itself i'll need to start cutting and flaring some of these in situ and that is no fun because it is pretty hard work but anyway we'll get this one in place that'll be right there probably the more complicated section of the whole boat is right here and uh, because of the autopilot the rest of it's just going to be pretty much straight line runs And all of the lines will be blown out with high pressure air prior to installation to make sure that I've got no particles floating around inside. The Extreme care while you're doing these flares in situ that you don't break the pipe. So always loosen off the fittings on the other end so there's no excess tension. In them. I've been here for a day. Sat here. This is one of the most difficult parts right here. Is, there's a lot going on right here. So trying to minimize the amount of bends and nothing more than 90 degrees at a time because we just don't want to have fluid having to travel too much and create resistance. After three days of relatively frustrating work, and I've got to say this is one of the hardest things I've had to do for a long time is this hydraulic steering. Bending copper lines inside small robes to mount and making sure that the flares are matching up perfectly has been challenging to say the least. But let's have a bit of a look where I'm at. Um, yesterday I had a bit of a a bit of a moment where I forgot to put a couple of T's in, so that created about another three hours work just to go back. But certainly, uh, this is not my forte, but I'm, I am getting there. So I've basically got the three lines coming through. We've got starboard port and one down in there is the balance line. That's actually coming to this junction here where I've got the balance line, which doesn't need a T in it, but I do need a stop valve or a ball valve here to ensure that I can disconnect this whole thing from the autopilot pump. That's so, so important because if ever I have a failure of the pump, 
if ever we have a failure of that pump, I need to be able to shut it off so I've still got autonomous steering. Um, the other thing too is I can actually remove that pretty simply now. I was actually coming up with all types of iterations. I'll show you a photo of what I was sort of anticipating doing, but I think this is going to be best. There will be three hydraulic hoses linking the actual pump because we've got a bit of an issue with NPT fittings don't match up with BSP fittings and uh, there isn't a fitting other than this 90 degree one which I bought which were actually about $130 for those two elbows there um, but I'm going to have to get some sort of a hose made to go from there down to this flared copper fitting here. The next part is the port line, the starboard line. That port line's got to go all the way through all the way through to the stern sugar scoop. So I'm just poking that through now. That's a three metre length. And what I intend to do is actually bend it just here and clip it down to the wall here because I don't want any loose copper lines anywhere that can vibrate and bang on things. They're better off to be mounted onto the actual hull with P-clips uh, to ensure that there's no sort of uh, you know vibration as the steering is operating. I'm actually trying to straighten those as much as possible, but trying to put this all in one length, which is actually ideal. We don't want too many fittings. But once I get through to the sugar scoop there, we've got a whole nother manner to deal with over there. <laughs> 